Secondly, the, the defense of the truth that the apostle presents, and then this matter of being walking after the Spirit and walking uh, worthily before the Lord God. I think I need, first of all, however, just to uh, say a few things about what the Apostle Paul has said already in this letter. He starts off in this letter, which he sent to Rome, by saying, of course, that all people are sinners, all people need to be saved from sin. He goes on and says that the Mosaic law, the law of Moses, is good and holy, but only Christ can remove sin. Only Christ can remove the power of sin. And then he goes on and says that through the righteousness of God, sin is judged, but salvation is provided. And so then with the coming of Jesus Christ, a new age of redemptive history has begun. The Lord Jesus came at that time in the fullness of God's purpose. And uh, that was the beginning of the new age. And so then the atoning death of Jesus Christ is central to God's plan of salvation. The atoning death of the Lord Jesus Christ is the very center of human history, from Adam to the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, so that it is central to God's plan of salvation. And then the apostle goes on to say how justification is by faith alone. We can only be made right in the sight of God by the exercise of faith, which is God-given, and looking to him for that free gift of salvation by grace alone through faith. And those who are in Christ have a sure hope of future glory and are then must and should live by the power of the Holy Spirit having been having died with Christ to live a new life so that is where we are this morning by the power of the Holy Spirit those who have died with Christ live a new life so there we have the letter so now as we begin in chapter 6 verse 1 Paul says, what shall we say then? Now, having said, what shall we say then? He is now continuing, as it were, following up what he said in, in earlier chapters, especially in chapter 5. Now, there had been a challenge to the Apostle Paul. He hints at, in chapter 3, and verse 8 it goes like this why not do evil that good may come as some people slanderously charge us with saying their condemnation is just so Paul there is saying that there are people who who are accusing the Apostle Paul of saying that if you if you sin and continue to sin the grace of God is poured out more and more and that is a reason for sinning even more that's a reason for continuing in sin so we see there in verse 1 of chapter 6 what shall we say then are we to continue in sin that grace may abound and in your version of the Bible it comes by no means in the Bible, that were, translation that was produced uh, and published in 1611 in England, just over 400 years ago, the Bible translators put two words, God forbid. 
Strong words. God forbid that we should continue in sin, that grace may abound. So the apostle here now goes into detail about this. This part, if you like, of Romans, in a way, is in brackets. This chapter 6 and so is chapter 7. Uh, and we find that the teaching in chapter 5 goes on, um, as it were, continually in chapter 8. So this is, uh, there's a problem here, two problems, which the Apostle Paul is having to address. The problem about the relevance of the law in chapter 7 and the, and the matter of grace here in chapter 6. So he, he now brings his argument Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now we have to pause here and consider the foundation, the very foundation concerning our relationship with God. Way back there, uh, early in the time of Israel, God, through Moses, says this, uh, you don't have to turn to it, but if you wish to, it is in Leviticus chapter 11. The Lord says this, I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, or separate yourself, and be holy, for I am holy. You shall not defile yourselves or, 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 or make yourselves dirty, Verse 45, for I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. And God says that to each and every person who is seeking to live a Christian life, everyone who is in Christ, that is the foundation. It doesn't start with man, it starts with the character and the nature of God. God who is from everlasting to everlasting, who, who spoke this universe into existence, who spoke all the creatures on this earth into existence, who made man in his image. It starts with the very character of God. And therefore he goes on. This is his argument. How can we who died to sin still live in it? We need to have this idea very strongly planted in our minds, in our souls. As we go through this little passage, we refine references to dead, crucified, so here we have, first of all, how can we who died to sin live in it? He goes on, who have been baptised into Christ were baptised into his death. We have been baptised into the death of Christ. Now that is in a form that is passive. It is done to us by God. Not something we can do for ourselves. When you are baptised, if you have been in water, somebody else baptised you. And this baptism is a baptism done by God. Baptised into Christ Jesus, into Christ, baptised into his death. Verse 4, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. See, this word keeps coming out in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too might be raised. And then, verse 5, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, note that, a death like his. Consider that. We have been united into a death like the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. He goes on, 
verse 6 we know that our old self was crucified with him we were crucified with him so the Apostle Paul is saying something to, to us that is completely counter against what we would think counterintuitive is how we might say it unbelievable almost ourself was crucified with him so when Christ was on that cross in the eyes of God in the knowledge of God knowing that you would be born and that you would be brought to him through uh, through repentance and faith you were there on that cross with Christ now my friends I would not dare to say this were it not before us in Scripture we know that's a strong word well Paul knows and Paul wants us to know we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing that there's a purpose then isn't there the purpose is so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin for the one who has died there's the death again has been set free from sin the end of verse 7 and verse 8 now if we have died with Christ we believe that we will also live with him you know what a sledgehammer is Daniel knows what a sledgehammer is pastor knows what a sledgehammer is it's that very very big powerful heavy bit on the end of a piece of wood for doing the worst work the Apostle Paul here is using a sledgehammer to get this into our minds and hearts it's a difficult it's, it is a difficult truth to accept or to understand but we need to understand friends a, a very important principle that where God is concerned where the things of salvation are concerned belief comes before understanding belief comes before understanding belief is an act of faith understanding is what the Lord gives us then by the work of his Holy Spirit to understand now with the world it's different the world will say oh I I can't believe this because I can't understand that's the world the world wants to understand then they'll believe this truth my friend each one of us needs to come to us and we need in a way to grow into this we need it to take hold of our soul, souls and our minds because it is what God has done for us so the Lord God has planted you and me into the death of his son in order we've seen the purpose united with him our old self crucified so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin does any one of us not have experienced being enslaved to sin no we by nature are slaves of sin and we accept God's verdict we accept embrace his verdict all have sinned and come short of the glory of God nobody by nature seeks after God 
not the real God, not almighty God. They may have an idea about a God, they may feel there must be something there, and they make their idols, and they bow down, and they do all sorts of things. But this God, our God, is the God of the universe, the God of all eternity. And he has done this, that we no longer be enslaved to sin. Now, do you find that to be good news? That is good news. That's wonderful news. Those sins that perhaps those habitual sins and those sins that we love, let's be honest, there are things about us, there's habitual things that we know that are wrong and they continue on and uh, they're parked there and they come out at the right time and at the wrong time. Perhaps there is never is a right time for sin. But those things that enslaved us, the Lord God is separating from us. The one who has died has been set free from sin. So then we have to contend with our enemy, Satan. And he will whisper, you haven't died to sin. You're a sinner, you keep on sinning. You know that, that love that you have for gambling, the love that you have for drinking too much alcohol, love that you have for pornography, the love that you have for whatever idol it is. But God says, being crucified with Christ, God has done something that we must embrace and make our own. And to know indeed, as it says there in verse 14, sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law but under grace. Sin will have no rule over you. Now that's the promise of God as we seek to live by his word. First of all, to believe his word, to take it into our hearts and minds and say, yes, that which is wrong is broken because I have been crucified with Christ. Buried with Christ. Crucified and buried with Christ. And raised with Christ. Verse 4, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life, that we too might be raised and to live in newness of life. <clears throat> Can you see... My friend, <clears throat> how the central part, the central feature of our life is the person of Christ. And that is what God the Father calls us to do, to live a Christ-centered life. You see, I mentioned, didn't I, this matter of the fact that God calls us to be holy. Be holy as I am holy. And that basic truth will be with us continually. It won't go away. It is firmly fixed because it is a part of the nature of God. But part of that 
being holy as I am holy, essentially is to be is that I being united to the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been united to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a fact. <clears throat> if you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour, you are united to Christ. And you are united to the people of God. That's a fact. Which is why we say, we don't just call him Jesus. We don't just call him Jesus Christ. We refer to him as the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he can only become the Lord of our life as this becomes the reality of our lives. So, the Apostle Paul repeats and repeats, doesn't he, and keeps hammering this into our minds, that we may walk in newness of life. And he goes on and repeats, verse 5, he, he puts question, doesn't he, and states it. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. A resurrection like his. Our death has been like his. Our resurrection is like his. I'm fond of underlining in my Bible in red certain words and uh, this portion has been underlined for quite some time now bits and pieces but as I came back to it I started to double underline now it's double lined it's got green as well red and green and you know those works, words like his a death like his is now double underlined and resurrection like his that is underlined because I hadn't really noticed it before it hadn't really come with power to mind and heart that yes our resurrection is like his and so he goes on we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so the Lord says to us this morning, individually, you know, that, that thing that has gripped you all of your life, or that, that, that sin that has suddenly become part of your life, uh, perhaps something since you came to Cyprus, or perhaps you started watching a particular program on the television. The Lord is saying, the body of sin might be brought to nothing, no longer enslaved to sin. For the one who has died has been set free from sin. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we believe that we will also live with him. That, friends, should be our daily experience, shouldn't it? Living with the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> He has sent forth his Holy Spirit into our hearts and minds. <clears throat> and it's through the Holy Spirit that we have awareness of God the Father and God the Son. Through the Holy Spirit we have awareness of them. That is how we can have communion with the Lord in our hearts. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Well, we know that our bodies will die, but we know that we will never die again. Because as our, as our body stops working, we know that our mind, our heart, our soul is with the Lord. To be absent from the body, dead, is to be present with the Lord. Instantaneous. Jesus said to the dying thief, didn't he? Today you'll be with me in paradise. And when the Roman soldier, whoever he was, came to break the legs of that man, and he then suffocated, as soon as his heart stopped beating, he was with the Lord in paradise, with God. 
we will never die again because Jesus has, done, has not died again. Jesus has ascended to the Father and we, in our turn, will ascend to the Father. Death no longer has dominion over him. It's for each of us, friends, to, to examine our lives in the light of God's word. And uh, it drives us to our knees. It drives us to our knees. Lord, Lord, help me. Help me. I confess, Lord, that this thing has gripped me for long. I cannot get rid of it. I like it too much. Lord, I love that sin more than I lo love you. Lord, I love that sin more than I love you. That's what it means to continue in our sin, friends. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. And we have been brought into newness of life also, as it says there in verse 10 and 11, brought to life, we live to God. You also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. United to God in Christ Jesus. In another letter to the Colossians, and uh, I commend this to you, if you'd like to turn, you have time, to turn to the book of Colossians, it's on page 1591, if you've got a, an English Bible, Colossians. Okay, Colossians chapter 3. Have we found it in our Farsi Bibles? Yes. Got it? Yes, sir. Good. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated, seated at the right hand of God, Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. My life, David, you say your name. To yourself. You say your name to yourself. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Just a few words. But that is how, that is what God has done. That is how God sees it. Oh, we see ourselves all with our feet on the ground and we get hungry and we get fed up. We have to go to bed and go to sleep, and waste time in bed. But as far as God is concerned, your life is hidden with Christ in God. And you know, if that is true of you, that sets you apart from every other person in this world who does not know Christ. It makes us a, a, a distinctive and a very separate people in that first those first words from Leviticus God says consecrate yourself I am holy he says consecrate yourself be holy for I am holy consecrate separate yourself be understanding that we must be separate because our life is hidden with Christ in God while God has done this and though, therefore, the Apostle says there in verse 12, let not, therefore, sin reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. We have to say to those passions, stop. When you start, when you start to think about this, that, or the other, which is wrong, stop. 
Do not present your members to sin. You see, he has said there, newness of life, we, it was passive when we were crucified with Christ. It was passive when we were buried with Christ. It was passive when we were raised with Christ, but now we have to live in newness of life. That's active. That's what we have to do. Do not present your bodies to sin, verse 13. Present your body, yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. Present, that is an active word, that is our responsibility. And so that, that is the way. That is the way to live. I want to bring to you another word from the Old Testament and I'm going to give you time to find this it's in the book of Isaiah this is the last thing in the book of Isaiah in chapter 35 verse 8 a highway shall be there and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it it shall not belong to those who walk on the way it shall belong to those who walk on the way even if they are fools they shall not go astray the way of holiness a highway, a way of holiness. The unclean won't be there. They shall not pass over it. It shall belong to us, to those who walk on the way. You don't have to be very clever. Even if they're fools, they shall not go astray because we are led by the Holy Spirit. And it is by the Holy Spirit. You've got chapter 6 of Romans open before you. I want you just to turn the page and to find Romans chapter 8. And this is our very last point. Romans chapter 8 verse 5. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh that's the earthly sinful way those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit go back to verse 4 in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us we walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit if you know the Lord as your saviour you know and sense that Holy Spirit within you is this true of you? Have you come to know the Lord as your Saviour? Truly? Have you got that witness of the Holy Spirit within your heart and mind that you are a child of God? Or is this, do you feel this is foreign to you? Something you really don't know about? Something you have not experienced? If that's the case, you need to believe Him the gospel and come to the foot of the cross and to seek the Lord for salvation that is active that is something that we must do in order to come to know the Lord as our Saviour Amen well let's seek the Lord in prayer our God and Heavenly Father we thank and praise you for your goodness to us in Christ Jesus we thank you Father God for this free salvation and Lord these these words that we have read are perhaps difficult for us to understand but we pray Lord that even as we've come to trust you we'll come to trust fully what your word says and then Lord we pray that you are Enable us by your Holy Spirit to grow in our understanding of what we have read. All Lord, to your praise and glory. 
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.